Hi, it's Steve. How are you? On this week's show, I got asked, how do you deal with the stigma of mental health? I'll tell you all about it in five seconds' time. Ready, camera? Studio stand by. Studio is ready for live. If I enter your life, it will change. Steven, your show is not a show. You show everything with such authenticity. It's an experience. Hello from Sydney, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are uh, and whenever you are watching this, whether it's live or, or on all the repeats and all the little cut-down content that we do. My first message to you is in relation to the whole aspect of the health of your mentality, the health of your relationships, the health of your wealth. My number one message to you, and one of the things that I'll talk about as we, we go through today's show, find people that share your common goals and interdependencies. Find those people. In my case, I found that person, uh, and it was in the context of a lady by the name of Donna, just turning the audio on, by the la lady by the name of Donna. When Donna first approached me to work with we, me, I made it abundantly clear from the get-go. This was about a mission. This was about a vision. And I was looking for someone with common goals and interdependencies. I wasn't looking for a virtual assistant. I wasn't looking for someone to work with me. I wasn't looking for an employee. So the very first thing, when you start thinking about the concept of mental health, your mental resilience, your ability to be present in your own life, you don't do life alone. That's why human beings are herd animals. So one of the most important things you do is find people with common goals to you. Find people who are interdependent with you. What does that look like, Steve, you might be asking? What are your hobbies, sports clubs that you're involved in, art classes that you go to, fitness classes that you go to? Those are examples of people who have common goals and are inter interdependent with you. Donna, let's, uh, let's look at what we're talking about on today's show. What are the questions we're covering on mental health, breaking the stigma and talking to colleagues? Bring it up big for us, Donna, please. So the mental health, breaking the stigma and talking to colleagues, it's the journey through mental health, and I'll explain more of that as we go. Our first question for today that's... Uh, coming on it's trending on forbes.com is how to deal with the stigma of mental health and we call that an intuitive resilience um, second question we're covering today is how to talk to colleagues about mental health what we're calling workplace empathy and it's on fastcompany.com so the first question we're going to tackle uh, in the way that we go about doing it on the show Oh, sorry. Well done, Donna. The, the, so the two questions, sorry, back again, Donna, the two questions, let's summarize the show. How to deal with the stigma of mental health, number one, and how to talk to colleagues about mental health are the two questions, intuitive resilience and workplace empathy. So let's go and take the first question, how to deal with the stigma of mental health. And I just want to go through a couple of slides here before we head off to some content inside the academy that covers, and we'll come back to the board and speak in more detail about that. Donna, I want to take fact, you on a journey from when you were. Donna, take us to the actual show layout. <laughs> take us to the show layout, uh, the video that actually covers how the show runs for people who aren't familiar with it. Uh, it's the intro that we did last week. Just let people see. During how season one, things began to change as these changes swept the world. An Oscar and Emmy Award winner of the DeSady Institute said, Steve, you should answer questions live. So we took questions live from guests. My question is, how do I bring people together even though we're far apart? My question. My question. My question. My question. My question. My question. You show everything with such authenticity. I have a question for you. Question away. They kept asking and I kept answering. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me what I haven't got the guts to tell myself. I'm okay. What the heck is happening right now? Oh my gosh, that was incredible! Wow. Even your show is not a show, it's an experience. And I heard you. Feels so good. That's why you're here. Thank you. But as the world changes, you've changed, and so have we. This season is still about questions, but now we are being targeted, topical, about what's trending today and at scale from Forbes, Huffington Post and more. Mental health, diversity, behavioural marketing, managing change, depression, isolation, communication mastery, how to speak up, to listen, to lead, how to live. 
This season we're aligning and matching these questions to modules and lessons from inside the Desadi Academy. A trending question is asked. We take a clip from a course lesson from the Academy. Then I unbox the answer with tools and actions and tactics on the whiteboard. Not just talking about an answer, but providing tools, frameworks and tactics. After all, a question is not answered until you action it. This is the all new Stephen Desadi Live. Maybe just like letting people know they're probably going to have to watch it a couple times because there's a lot of information. Welcome. It's your life. It's your business. This is your live experience. <laughs> My second message to everyone coming from a movie of Al Pacino's a few years back. If you get tangled up, just tango on. So uh, I drive Donna nuts sometimes because I'm jumping around and she's trying to run things in the back end. So oh, pardon me, Donna. Uh, okay, how to deal with the stigma of mental health. Let's go to those couple of slides that support this before we go out to the video in the academy, Donna. So if you bring it up to big, go to the next slide for me. So how to deal with the stigma of mental health? Let, let's get real about some issues with this first of all, because when I talk and tackle issues, teach, coach or mentor on issues, it's always from a different approach. And you'll see that in the next two or three minutes as we go into the academy. Hybrid and remote, and remote working is not going away. Four-day work uh, weeks are not going away. So the need for exemplary leadership more than ever is now in demand because hybrid and remote working are not going away. Four-day work weeks are not going away. Next one, don't, please, Donna. So one of the things that we need to do is understand that there'll be a continued stigma around mental health. In the same way, there's still a stigma about their biases and diversity and intolerance towards same-sex marriages, towards some of the issue about the presence of women in business, sports, society today, which is beautiful, about how people tolerate the biases and diversity issues are still challenged. And we'll come to why that is in a few moments. So we need a more focused approach. And that approach needs to come in an understanding that there's continued mental health issues. They're not going to go away. We need to have better mental health support. We need to have, and there's a growing trend, towards wellness programs. We need to start taking the counsel and advice of the icons of, of history who use meditation as part of their normal function in their every single day lives. All of us now need to start understanding that elite sportsmen, elite businessmen, elite icons of history used wellness, mental health support and meditation in their daily lives. We all need to start embracing that. And we are. Because for those who think we're going to solve the issues of mental health, think of the issue around the whole, how long it took for Nelson Mandela to break down the apartheid mentality how that still exists in some parts of the world, how intolerance and diversity and the bias that many people have towards same-sex marriage, all of these things are part of breaking down generational conditioning. So let's go to the first video inside the academy that quickly tackles this and we'll come back to the board. I want to take you on a journey from when you were a baby to two, then two to five, six to 18, and then 19 plus, so into your adulthood, and take you from a situation of you, your environment, who you try and please, what your doubts and fears, what your values and beliefs, and therefore your judgment. Effectively what's happening as you go through your life, your environment expands, the people you need to please expand, your doubts and fears start to grow, your values and beliefs start to be challenged, and your judgment goes from not really having any judgment, just being instinctual, to following some rules, to beginning to, beginning to challenge. And as you get into your, your early adult years and then could keep going, you begin to doubt some of those values and beliefs, forget about them and start conforming. Today, this is starting to get your judgment, starting to get into overwhelm, depression, suicide, all those types of things I talked about at the extreme, even though they're not necessarily extreme because we've got the highest levels of depression and those types of things. So one of the things that we all need to be aware of is one of the biggest challenges is our conditioning. It's how we have been raised generationally to believe in certain things. We, and if we just take a, a snapshot of the last 18 months, we weren't conditioned through any of the generations that exist on the planet through from zero to 100. We weren't conditioned 
for us to be told to stay at home and keep apart from each other. We weren't conditioned to say that children had to be homeschooled, even though that was a choice of a small number of people who wanted to do homeschooling. Fine. But as generations, it was part of our conditioning that remote working, that being isolated, that having to have a thing called social distancing and standing away from someone was breaking up our conditioning. So one of the first things about mental health is we need to understand most of mental health, and there's some stuff that we'll do over the coming week's shows in relation to the chemistry of what's happening in your brain that's causing some of this disconnect between reality that causes depression, but we won't be doing that today. Mental health is your ability to manage the reality that you exist in today. It's your understanding that in your personal life, there are a series of activities that are happening to you that are conditionally different to anything you've experienced before. And part of what I showed you in the video inside the academy, which is titled Fearless as a Baby, when a baby is born, our, our only fear is the fear of loud noise and height. When we're, when we're born, they're the only fears that we have. By the, so when we're a little baby, that's all we have. By the time we get into a teenage, we've got peer group. By the time we get into adults, we've got to actually have societal conditioning. So we've got to get approved by society. Today, we've got to be approved by social media. Today, we've actually got to be approved by our bosses, our, our teachers, whatever it might be. Um, so the end result is as adults, our conditioning is constantly being eroded. And then all of a sudden... In 2020, all of this got literally nuked, literally. The whole manner with which we were conditioned from loud noises and height as children to peer group pressures to, so, to societal, to social, to our communities and to our workplaces, all of our conditioning, all of it that associated and evolved through this growth period from a baby to a teenager to an adult, all of it got confronted in 2020. So the business of your life right now is you need to be consciously aware of your mental state. How do you do that? Through meditation and being present. More of that will come as the show develops. Other thing you need to do is exercise and move your body more now than ever before to actually ex explode the endorphins and the chemicals that happen inside your body. More than ever, you need to share. And we'll talk about this in the next question when we talk about the ways with which you can communicate in the workplace and outside of the workplace. So let's do a summary on this. Our conditioning when we were born was that we were, we were afraid of noise, uh, loud noises and height. By the time we got to our teenage years, it was peer group pressures and all those other types of things. As we got to adults, we had society pressures, social pressures, community pressures, workplace pressures. All of those invaded our conditioning, which was our values, our beliefs, our principles, the character that defined us through our, through our growing. But in 2020, when all of this impacted us, every single thing became a mental health issue because there was a massive disconnect between what we were conditioned to believe and then the mental health of the current reality. Mental health is your brain's ability to deal with the reality of what's happening around you. And a lot of the times it's the, it's the physical and biological makeup of your brain in terms of the chemistries matched against what you predict needs to happen. I have a workplace arrangement. I go to work. I have a nine to five existence or whatever it may be. So one of the things in business, the business of your life, and I'm, you call, I normally do this personal life, business life. The reason I'm doing it all on the business life, this is the business of your life, whether it's personally in your relationships or whether it's professionally in your job, career, small business owner. Your mentality must be in the way you refresh. We'll come to more of that as we go through the show. You must move and exercise and move your brain, even if it's just walking, to flush things out. I'll talk more about that as we go. And you must speak up. If there was ever a period in time where you could speak up, and let's look at the whole thing post Me Too and the tragedy of how that started, but the beauty of what it's caused, the silver lining of the presence of women in all kinds of things around the world today, which is fantastic. 
the presence of women taking their rightful place in the world and being able to stand and be as positive a contributor as, as they are and they always have been. And if you want to know my attitude towards women, go onto my LinkedIn platform and read what I wrote on Mother's Day here in Australia on Sunday about what the world would be like if women weren't in it. But if you think of where we were before the Me Too movement and where we are today, that evolution has come through the mentality, the exercise and the sharing and that mentality, exercise and sharing has influenced the business of life and the way that women fit in it. Donna, can we go to the next section, please? Oh, yes. Donna always leads me in this because I keep forgetting. Bring it up, bring, bring it up big for me. So inside the academy, there's a, so the, the, the Desadi Academy and the Institute, there's a people engagement psychology. It's how do you unlock the power of the mind when meeting and working with people? And fearless as a baby, as the video I just showed you, in terms of how we go from an infant all the way through to being adults and the conditioning and the influence and how our values and beliefs are challenged to the point of conformity, which is part of the biggest issue. We're conforming to what, what we believe to not be true. And that confusion creates mental health, mental fatigue, and, and damages our mental resilience. But there's also a video which talks about communication, empathy, and we're going to cover that in the next question. But it pairs very well. How do you actually express yourself? How do you understand your conditioning, which is fearless as a baby inside the Institute? And then how do you have communication, empathy? And we're going to cover that in the next question. Hi, I hope you're enjoying the show. Before we suit up and keep going, I just wanted to explain what the DeSady Institute and the Academy is very quickly. As you can see over my shoulder, it's in two distinct areas, personal development and professional development. And personal development, as you can see, is unstoppable confidence, relationship story, believing your brilliance, mindset. All of the consultancy work I did over two decades around the world is inside of professional and business development. The stuff around marketing, communication, brand creation, behavioral marketing, consumer psychology. There are a number of ways, and I'll talk about this later in the show, you can engage all the way up to personal coaching. But the first stage and the first step is that just over a dollar a day, you can become a member of the DeSady community and get access to the academy inside the Institute. Details below and I'll see you inside the Academy. Let's get back to the show. Donna, let's take me over to the, the second uh, studio for a sec. I just want to have a quick chat with everyone about a couple of things and just position some stuff. Everyone, um, many times in our lives, we have a preconceived notion based on our conditioning, given what we've just done, about the manner with which someone at a certain age at a certain gender, whatever it may be, conducts and lives their life. Now, in my case, I'm a little older than 21. And recently I went out uh, because I go to the Hilton and I do a lot of work at the Hilton Hotel uh, in their coffee shop and foyer areas and things of that sort. But I actually went and visited the, the, the head maitre d' and I went out and had coffee with him on a Sunday. We had breakfast in actual fact. And he asked me because he, he gets to see me all the time. He sees me work, but we never have a personal conversation where we open up a little bit. There's a reason why I'm sharing this with you, everyone. One of the things he asked me is, are you married, Steve? Do you have kids, Steve? What's your family structure, Steve? Quite a religious man, very strong a man of faith, very strong man of family, which is beautiful. Everyone, our conditioning towards people influences the way that we react towards them so in my case i'm not married and there's a reason why i'm putting this posture and this this positioning together i'm not married i don't have a family and i don't have an immediate family that period of my life is now gone so it's just me the price of my life is this this solitude that i live but the prize of my life is the ability for me to do what i do for me to be able to not have to be challenged with a, with, with family wondering why my living room is actually in the studio okay everyone as I said to you before, if you're wanting to get involved in the Desadi Institute at community level or even coaching, reach out to us in all the different ways that you can. But until I see you in the next show, be well and be brilliant. Today more than ever, humanity needs you. Start investing in the world called your dreams.